When it comes to infrared spectroscopy, you can't beat the James Webb Space Telescope with a giant mirror designed to collect infrared light from extremely dim objects, Webb has the ability to reveal infrared spectra of almost any type of object or material in space with unprecedented detail. The search for extrasolar planets has certainly picked up in the last decade or so. Imagine in 2022, NASA surpassed 5,000 confirmed exoplanets, which are alien worlds beyond our solar system. These include a diversity of distant planets, including perhaps rocky super-Earths, gas giants like Jupiter, ice giants like Neptune, and beyond. Fortunately though, because of the constraints that astronomers face, the great majority have been identified by rather indirect means. However, one of the most common and successful indirect approaches is the radial velocity method, often known as Doppler spectroscopy. Now this approach is based on studying the spectra of stars for evidence of wobble, or the star moving towards and away from Earth. The presence of planets, which exert gravitational effect on their own suns, causes this movement. Many of the objects studied by Webb, such as the earliest galaxies to emerge after the Big Bang, are so faint that the Webb's massive mirror must look at them for hundreds of hours to collect enough light to build a spectrum. The nurse spec is meant to examine 100 objects concurrently in order to analyze thousands of galaxies during the course of its five-year mission. The nurse spec will be the first space spectrograph with this exceptional multi-object capacity. But Goddard scientists and engineers had to build a new technological micro-shutter mechanism to regulate how light entered the nurse spec to make it practical. So let's talk a little bit more about this technology. Essentially, the radial velocity method consists not of looking for signs of planet themselves, but in observing a star for signs of movement. This is deduced by using a spectrometer to measure the way in which the star's spectral lines are displaced due to the Doppler effect. For example, how light from the star is shifted towards the red or blue end of the spectrum, redshift or blue shift. These changes indicate whether the star is moving away from redshift or towards blue shift, the Earth. Astronomers can establish the presence of a planet or a system of planets based on the velocity of a star. Even the speed of a star around its center of mass is far slower than that of a planet. It can be measured using modern spectrometers. This approach was the most successful at finding exoplanets until 2012, when it was surpassed by transit photometry. Nonetheless, it is a highly successful approach that is frequently used in tandem with the transit method to prove the presence of exoplanets and restrict their size and mass. Let's talk more about the advantages of radial velocity method. This method was the first successful means of exoplanet detection and has had a high success rate for identifying exoplanets in both nearby Proxima b and Trappist-1 seven planets and distant star systems Corot 7c. One of the main advantages is that it allows for the eccentricity of the planet's orbit to be measured directly. The radial velocity signal is distance independent but requires a high signal to noise ratio spectra to achieve a high degree of precision. As such, it is generally used to look for low-mass planets around stars that are within 160 light-years from Earth, but can still detect gas giants up to a few thousand light-years away. Planets surrounding low-mass stars, such as M-type or red dwarf stars, can be detected using this radial velocity approach. This is because low-mass stars are more impacted by the gravitational push of planets and because such stars revolve more slowly, leading to more clear spectral lines, 
M-type stars, for example, are the most numerous in the universe, accounting for 70% of stars in spiral galaxies and 90% of stars in elliptical galaxies. Second, current research suggests that low-mass M-type stars are the most likely location for terrestrial rocky planets. As a result, the radial velocity method is best suited for studying Earth-like planets that orbit near to the Sun. So it is the best suited for studying Earth-like planets that orbit near red dwarf suns within their, of course, respective habitable zones. Another significant benefit is the method's ability to impose precise limitations on a planet's mass. Although a star's radial velocity can only provide estimations of a planet's minimum mass, separating the planet's own spectral lines from those of the star can provide measurements of the planet's radial velocity. This permits astronomers to calculate the inclination of the planet's orbit, which allows them to calculate the planet's real mass. This approach also eliminates false positives and offers information about the planet's composition. The key concern is that this type of detection is achievable only if the planet orbits around a relatively bright star that emits a lot of light. So, in conclusion, if you like this video, then make sure to check this video right here about the terrifying, weirdest discovery that we just discovered with the James Webb Space Telescope. Otherwise, giving us a thumbs up or a sub would really help us reach a wider audience with the new algorithm. It would mean a lot. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!